And the part of the passage we're going to focus in on starts there in verse number 24. And I reference this verse periodically from time to time. And, and you know, these, this passage particularly uh, when it comes to church attendance. And that's exactly what I'm going to be preaching on again this morning. And, you know, this subject is, I believe, extremely important. And, and one of the things, you know, I hope I don't sound too much like a broken record when you come to church or, you know, when you hear different things preached. But it is very needful for us, and this has been my experience, just being in church and going to church for, you know, over a decade, for, or for years and years and years and years, you know, just seeing people come and go. People, seeing people come and go. Now, thank God, our church is just a little over two years old, and we have people in here that have been here from the very first service, and people have been very faithful and continue to be faithful, and other people have joined a little bit later, and are, are real faithful to church, but every single time I preach a sermon on, you know, church attendance and things like that, I always say, hey, you know, look around, because in a few years, I guarantee you, there's going to be people who aren't here that you would probably never guess would, would ever drop out of church. Now, let me say this too. I'm not, you know, it doesn't bother me if someone leaves our church to go to another church and serve God somewhere else. Right? I mean, if you're, if you're going to go to, you know, the, the, the problem comes in is when you just get out of church. Right? When people just don't go to church. If you're, if you're going to, you know, a church, you think it's a better fit, you think it's a better church or whatever, or it's what you can do. Maybe, maybe there's other things that are keeping you from coming to here specifically to this church. Whatever. You know, I'm not... That's not what I'm going to be preaching about at all this morning is, is necessarily me per se. And, and, and let me add this too, because what, one of the things that we see with, with what I've seen with people is that oftentimes there's people that just seem to be like, man, you're die hard. You're never going to go anywhere. You know, people who've been instrumental, even in our church, have just kind of faded away. And we're going to look at a lot of passages this morning and you know, hopefully if people who may be listening online, but more importantly, you know, for you guys that are here this morning, I, I hope this can make some kind of an impact on you to understand, really understand the importance just of being in church in general. And, you know, when I started this church two years ago, I don't know what everyone's expectations were. You know, maybe some people had a real high expectation and I didn't live up to that expectation. If I didn't do that, sorry. But I don't know what you'd expect. You know, we, we started this church here specifically because I already had, had known of and talked with a bunch of people who were from this area. And they know there's no churches out here that are really going forth and really interested in winning souls and really knocking on doors and doing the work and, and taking hard stands on, on biblical truths, especially on moral truths that are just, just found very clearly in scripture and that things that seem to be watered down and that was one of the reasons why i chose to start a church here right now i'm not claiming to be the best preacher the be, you know the most interesting person or whatever but you know what that shouldn't matter at all as far as reasons to go to church how interesting your 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 preacher is is not you know you got to look at is the person qualified is the church, you know, is, are we doing a good work? Are we doing a good job? Is this what we're doing? Is it got the right doctrine? You got the right salvation? And, you know, that's what should be most important to you. And unfortunately, with, with some people, uh, and, and there's lots of different reasons why people get out of church. So I'm not just, just broad brushing every single person who's ever come here and doesn't come here anymore or anything like that. Believe me, don't, don't take it that way, please. Um, but you get, it's, you know, there's a lot of excitement. Just kind of like when you first get saved. I don't know about you, but for me, when I first got saved, I was real excited and, and you know, wanted to tell everybody about it. And it was something that was real personal and impactful. Obviously, your salvation, you, you know, you, hey, man, I put my trust in Jesus. I'm saved. This is great. This is good news. And I told my friends, and it was like, what are you talking about? I kind of thought I was crazy, you know, and tell my family about it. But then after a while, that excitement just generally seems to fade. And it's kind of like that with, any, with everything, right? I mean, you get married, everything's great. Like, man, we just got married, you go on a honeymoon, you're having all this fun, and, and, you, and you're learning each other, and you're living together and everything else. And then after a while, you know what? It fades. That excitement level fades. The honeymoon's over, right? And what, the title of my sermon this morning is when the excitement fades. 
You know, so even coming to church, you know, you get involved, like, man, church, I've never been to a church like this before. This is great. People are all involved. There's all this stuff going on. And it's real exciting. And you get plugged in and you can be doing a lot of work. But after a while, that excitement is going to fade. And what we need to understand about the Christian life and about your walk with God is that you need to be faithful to the Lord and faithful to the house of God when it's exciting and when it's not exciting. Amen. It's something that you need to make the decision on, just like your marriage, right? When you, when you make a vow and say, you know what, this is for life until death do us part, that you're serious about that vow. You're serious about that marriage. And you're going to say, I will not divorce my spouse. It's not an option, right? I'm, I've gone into this. And you know what? That's why you say for better and for worse, because there's going to be good times. There's going to be bad times. It's going to be real exciting and joyful. And then there's going to be times where it's not so fun. But either way, we're going to stick through this. You got to look at church as like a marriage where you're going to go into it going, Hey, I'm going to serve the Lord. And again, I, look, if, if there's a church that, that gets apostate and, and this turns real bad and turns sour, you've got some false, you know, get out of that church, but go to a different church, right? You don't have to marry yourself to one particular church, but decide and say, I will be in a church in God's house, wherever that may be, in God's house where he would have me to be in a, in a place where he's going to add me as a member to be a, a more functional Christian and to do the things that God has established church for. And when we look down here at Hebrews 10, look at verse number 24, the Bible reads, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work. So one of the jobs as you as a Christian, what we ought to be doing in general with each other is considering each other, thinking about one another. You know, you come to church, the church ought to be a church family. If you're brothers and sisters in Christ, you are a family. We have one heavenly father, and we ought to be able to share each other's burdens and concerns and, and be considering and thoughtful of each other so that we could provoke each other unto love and to good works, to do good, to do right, to be an encouragement. Because when you're out in the world, by and large, you're going to be exposed to all kinds of stuff and, and all kinds of sin and wickedness and just the, the thought process of the world and, and the ways of the world are going to try to steer you away from the Lord and into sin. 